Hi everyone, welcome to our webinar today on uh, cloud visibility and how to extend control um, for security and access across the hybrid network. With me today is Amnon Evan Zohar, Tufin Senior Product Manager for Cloud Security. Hi Amnon. Hey, hey Maya. How are you doing today? Doing well, looking forward. Great. Okay, so um, we're still going to give a couple of minutes for other people to join, and then we'll get started. Um, we have for you a couple of attachments. Uh, one is a solution brief for AWS uh, that you can find. You can find the link for that uh, if you click the attachments button. And the other is a white paper that we have on extending visibility and control to private and public cloud platforms. So you're welcome to download those two attachments. Uh, we're also are going to run a couple of polls during the webinar, and of course we'll leave uh, time for questions. Our webinar today is 45 minutes, and you're welcome to type in your questions throughout the webinar. Uh, if you click on the questions button, you'll be able to do that. And at the end, of course, we'll have time to answer uh, your questions. Okay, so let's give a couple more minutes uh, for people to join us, uh, and then Amnon will uh, will we will start with you. Yeah. So um, the the webinar today we're going to focus on cloud visibility. I think that's kind of the first challenge we identify when we talk to our customers about uh, the adoption of cloud platforms. Right. So we're, we're going to focus on that for this uh, webinar. We actually had a, a webinar, I think like a month or two ago, mm -hmm. around um, the challenges of cloud visibility and um, with a customer use case of how Tufin can be used to resolve that. So. If you missed that, you can find it on our Bright Talk channel. Okay, so um, I think we can get started. So once again, thank you everyone for joining us today for this <coughs> webinar. Uh, the webinar will be presented by Amnon Evan Zohar, Tufin Senior Product Manager for Cloud Security, and it's going to focus on cloud visibility and how to extend control of security and connectivity across the hybrid network. And when we talk about hybrid network, we of course mean physical platforms, private cloud platforms, and public cloud platforms, which are today probably in uh, almost every enterprise network that we see. Um, we are going to leave time at the end for questions, but feel free to, uh, to enter your questions. If you have questions during the webinar, just click the button uh, above and you can type in your questions. Uh, and we also have a couple of attachments uh, around the Tufin solution for cloud visibility that you can download. And with that, uh, I think we'll get started. Amnon. Sure. Okay, thanks Maya. And uh, hi everyone, thank you for uh, joining our webinar today. Uh, as Maya mentioned, my name is uh, Amnon. I'm leading the uh, uh, product management cloud security at Tufin. So, uh, what are that we're going to cover today? We're going to start with kind of a background on cloud and digital transformation, which is probably the, the, the most, uh, you know, the motivation, the huge motivation for enterprises to move to cloud, cover cloud security challenges, and obviously um, clarify how Tufin uh, can help you uh, address these challenges. And specifically for today's webinar, we're going to focus on the uh, visibility use case and kind of a wrap up and, and summary. And again, uh, feel free to add in the chat any open question that you have throughout this uh, presentation. So when we're actually talking about cloud, uh, we need to take maybe a step backwards and talk about digital transformation. Uh, from Wikipedia, the term digital transformation actually refers to a, a set of uh, technological, cultural, organizational, social, and creative changes. Uh, and we are, when we are actually combining all of these, uh, 
the digital transformation goes beyond the simple adoption of just a new technology and allow delivery of uh, services, experiences, and process of content regardless of the availability of uh, resources uh, for, you know, for, for the enterprise. Uh, transformation actually means that there's a whole changes that are going through uh, uh, or across foundational uh, business components, and this is actually what drives, uh, you know, changing consumer demand and changing technology and essentially changing also uh, competition. And this is definitely, uh, uh, you know, one said that this is definitely the biggest game changer for businesses in this uh, decade. Uh, now, the idea of actually shifting towards digital business transformation was kind of a speculation in most CEOs uh, a few years ago. But now, when we're talking with enterprise, when we're talking with customers, uh, this is definitely viewed by CXOs as, as a crucial of alignment of business strategies and ITs, and therefore actually uh, impact on the business itself. Uh, and as you can see in this, in this slide, quote from uh, leading uh, CEOs uh, from different market segments. Uh, Gartner uh, has actually conducted a survey uh, a couple months ago, and they indicated that around 42% of CEOs already have begun digital transformation uh, within their business. And almost a third of these enterprises have a formal digital strategy. Uh, CEOs also progressing their digital business in DVRs. Uh, same survey indicated that around 20% of these CEOs are now taking kind of a digital first uh, approach to business. Uh, for example, you know, they're taking the business uh, towards a kind of a mobile app or engagement with customers and their uh, end users. And, and last is that 20 22% of these uh, CEOs conducted or been participating in this uh, survey actually taking the digital even to the core of their uh, enterprise models. So what essentially we understand is that this is actually across the board and being adopted heavily more and more by different enterprises and by uh, different uh, CEOs. Uh, but uh, digital transformation, as you can see in this slide, without cloud is kind of a hub build bridge. Uh, from, from the enterprise point of view, um, what's actually on stake is, is, is survival. Uh, they are concerned about competition from disruptive businesses, businesses that are moving fast. Uh, and they are actually even more uh, concerned about the customer experience. And, and they need to innovate. And because essentially the innovation is kind of the only survival mantra, so to speak. Uh, and cloud model acts as a catalyst for this innovation. Um, organization need agility. They need the ability to scale up and down. Uh, they need efficiency, elasticity, and obviously also uh, cost optimization. And cloud provides all of these and more. Uh, cloud offers a platform for uh, tech experimental kind of uh, approach of uh, fail fast enables uh, organization to uh, rapid development, deployment, and distribution. And uh, with the cloud, testing new projects is more cost effective and low risk, and uh, the deployment time are much more faster, uh, especially when the uh, concept of a pay-as-you-go model is easy for everyone's uh, pocket. Uh, supporting the agile development methodology and the DevOps approach definitely helps the organization to innovate like a startup and still deliver as, as an enterprise. And as I mentioned, essentially digital transformation without cloud is really like a half, a half build bridge. And as you can see here, taken from a cloud security spotlight -like report, 76% uh, of organizations across different industries are either piloting implementing or already operating uh, in production in the cloud. Uh, most of them are actually uh, deploying, uh, but there are some that are still looking into that or are uh, uh, trying to understand uh, the value that the cloud provides, but this is very minor and this really, this percentage actually resonates well 
with the uh, with what we hear uh, from many of, of, of our own customers. So with that said, um, we uh, see or when we are looking at the industry uh, based on Gardner, Magic Warren, we see that from the public cloud vendors, and this is again n nothing new here, AWS definitely maintains the lead, uh, uh, but we see and also hear that uh, Microsoft Azure continues to, to make inroads uh, in the percentage of the respondents running applications and definitely gaining ground. Uh, we do uh, need to bear in mind that essentially uh, AWS Public Cloud market share is almost twice based on uh, end of uh, 2016 surveys. Uh, it's always, almost twice as big as Microsoft, Google, and IBM Cloud market share all together. So definitely a big lead here. That's also why Tufin uh, invest and continue seeing this uh, uh, direction as a strategic one, not only for 2017, but, but moving onwards. So uh, we would like to start with a short poll uh, asking you uh, what is the uh, public cloud vendor that your company uses? whether it's AWS, uh, Microsoft, Azure, Google Cloud, uh, Option D states whether you use more than one cloud vendor and, and getting the approach of uh, multiple cloud vendors, or you're not using public cloud at all as of today. So we'll give, uh, we'll give a few minutes, um, well, actually one minute <laughs> for you to, to respond, um, and then uh, we're going to look at the results. So uh, tell us about the cloud, the public cloud vendor you're using today, and um, and then uh, we'll of course uh, move on with the uh, with the presentation. We see right now that uh, uh, there's about about forty percent of you that are using more than one uh, cloud vendor. Forty percent of, of the people who responded so far. Uh, using more than one vendor, and I think this is this is in line with with some of what we're seeing. Um, yeah, and actually resonates well also with two thing value prop value proposition. Um, we hear more and more customers not don't don't want to stick into a single cloud vendor. Uh, they want uh, they don't want their you know to put everything in the same basket, and so they are uh, spreading around across different vendors. And it also makes sense looking at the results of the poll that around 50% of, of the um, the ones that are voted are actually AWS. This is, again, very well resonated with the different market share and dominancy of, of Amazon. So, yeah. And we, we also see cloud vendors making it a, very easy to uh, to subscribe to their services. I mean, Microsoft is, is bundling Azure with – uh, Office 365 and, exactly. and anything else that they sell. So a lot of a lot of organizations that are Microsoft shops will, even if they already bought and are using AWS, will also try Microsoft Azure. So that's also, I think, one of the things uh, uh, driving the adoption of multiple cloud vendors. Agree. Okay, so um, I think so. Yeah, we see we see 50 percent using AWS, which of course makes sense, and 33% of you uh, using more than one cloud vendor. And I think we can move on. Yeah. Okay, so we talked about digital transformation. We talked about how cloud actually uh, helped with that. Uh, uh, and now we're actually getting more into the uh, exciting stuff of, of uh, while still the cloud adoption uh, is, is, is raising, there are still barriers to that. And the number one barrier, according to different services, like the one that you see here, is, is security. So um, the same survey that I used earlier around cloud security spotlight um, indicates that around 80% of organizations are concerned about cloud security. Um, some are extremely and most of them are very or moderately, but essentially 80% think that they want to adopt cloud, but the security aspect of that uh, is, is the one that concerns them the most, and, and that's why we actually uh, want to talk about it 
uh, today. So before actually moving forward on that, um, we still need to better understand what is the uh, market and who are the personas that are playing in the, secure, in the cloud security as opposed to uh, where Tufin actually grew from, which is the you know, legacy on-prem uh, market. Uh, and, and that actually also resonates with the, uh, with the challenges that we hear from the market. So we are in most, with most, talking with most customers, almost everyone have some kind of a maturity level in cloud using uh, or building two different teams. On the left side, there's the uh, DevOps, IT ops. This really varies between different uh, enterprises team. Uh, and on the right side is the security team, uh, the same security team that, you know, responsible overall for also the, the on-prem and the firewalls. And it's really important to understand these two and the different uh, agenda that each has. Uh, the DevOps team, they're actually, the DevOps methodology has been discussed a lot in the last, uh, or lately. Uh, they are the ones that are actually breaking down uh, the walls uh, between development and operation. Uh, they are serving as a fast-paced uh, business plan. They're serving this business plan. Uh, they want, along with their developers, they want to have a cool apps uh, to execute based on the business needs to deliver on time and move fast. Uh, agility and automation is definitely their, their best interest and the, the highest in their agenda. And essentially, they don't really care about security. And we hear that from different, with many of, of the discussion with customers. On the other side, we have a security team. Um, obviously, their main uh, challenge and their main um, mission is to mitigate cyber threats and reduce the attack surface. Uh, they want, they, they need to meet compliance on audit requirements uh, and define and manage the security policy, not only on the cloud, but across the whole network, across the, the hybrid environment. And on the other side, they don't really care about DevOps in the essence that uh, development operation, they need to stick, the security needs to stick with the security agenda, but they are definitely left behind. They are uh, feeling a bit losing control uh, given the fast pace that the DevOps team is running in cloud. And these two have two different agendas, and that's why the challenges when talking about cloud security. So talking about challenges, we are actually uh, looking into three main uh, challenges when talking about cloud security. Uh, the first one where most security teams encounter is the limited visibility into public cloud. It's either visibility to the infrastructure, but also keeping up the uh, fast pace that I mentioned earlier, the DevOps dictate. Um, they are even getting challenges on how to impact that. And, um, and even, you know, the, given also the survey results that we've seen earlier from the votes that were taken, uh, when you're talking about uh, having multiple uh, clouds vendors then having a dedicated console or jumping between these two uh, vendors actually make even these uh, security team even more uh, life more challenging. And it's very difficult from their perspective to troubleshoot issues, which again resonates with the uh, uh, visibility concept. Uh, being able to gain visibility in a single console that monitors and manages these policies uh, offers definitely a great cost saving and a significant return on investment. Uh, after visibility is resolved, uh, then the security team need to gain control over uh, security configuration in the cloud uh, to reduce the probability that we mentioned earlier about cyber attacks and to ensure uh, continuous compliance uh, with internal policies as well as industry uh, regulations. Uh, cloud vendors definitely uh, offer mechanisms to control that, uh, but the configuration itself and the responsibility is, is on the customer uh, side. Um, controlling security configurations uh, by using multiple consoles is not uh, ineffective. It's not only ineffective, but it's also risky. Uh, missing such a violation uh, may lead to uh, non-compliance or uh, fines and in some cases, loss of, of money and reputation that caused uh, once uh, a breach has occurred. 
Um, now, the agility of public cloud services is often tied to the shift to the DevOps, as mentioned earlier, uh, in order to facilitate rapid and frequent software releases. So the need for speed doesn't allow for the legacy security procedures that are in place. What was uh, right for uh, on-prem firewalls is no longer valid when we're talking in the cloud world. Uh, security team need to offer new security control uh, to avoid the bypass. Uh, and incorporating these new controls into DevOps is the next challenge after uh, defining and enforcing them across the hybrid network. And that's actually the third challenge that, uh, was, that is mentioned here, the fact that there's no really policy-based security automation uh, within cloud. So three different challenges. Uh, but as mentioned by Maya at the beginning of this webinar, we're going to focus today uh, specifically around the visibility and how to can help you address this challenge. So we talked about uh, cloud security and visibility, as you can see here, is definitely the biggest cloud security headache. Um, 37 of respondents into this survey uh, indicated specifically that visibility is the main headache. The visibility is the one that actually they're looking uh, to gain in cloud. Uh, even before actually compliance, compliance as you can see is the next one. Uh, and that, that makes definitely sense and that also resonates with what we hear from, from our customers. Uh, enterprises are either lack the right level of visibility or they just don't can, can't keep up with all the changes taking place in real time. Uh, the security team is losing visibility of infrastructure, network, and workloads running in the cloud. And, and that's a problem in an uh, active, heterogeneous cloud environment where things are always changing. And that actually leads us to the second poll that we would like to uh, get your feedback. Um, and this is, what is your uh, visibility, uh, top visibility need? Are you looking for a snapshot of your infrastructure, meaning just to see, to get visibility on your VMs, applications, security groups, or are you looking to, to gain visibility into changes into these? Uh, or are you looking more on uh, getting visibility to risks and vulnerabilities in your environment, uh, all of the above, or visibility may not be your primary concern uh, when it comes to cloud? Yeah, so again, we'll, we'll take a minute uh, yeah. in order to let everyone, uh, allow everyone uh, a chance to respond. And um, it's it's interesting for us because we see, so I think we see a, a lot of customers who are, who want to get visibility for, for all of the above. Yeah. But it's interesting to understand if there's, you know, any kind of distribution between them. Um, I think a lot of customers for a lot of customers, the, the control and visibility into the infrastructure is not just around security, but also around just basic control, even just fi financial control of how many instances are actually being brought up and and um, how how much of the of the service is being used. Agree. And uh, and of course, risks and vulnerabilities, uh, uh, and for the changes uh, that can be very important, like you said, on on for control of security and compliance. So, uh, yeah, we'll give a few more seconds uh, for people to uh, respond. So far, we, we don't have a single response that visibility is not a primary concern, so. Yeah. <laughs> which, which definitely uh, a good feedback for us. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a good, uh, good transfer for us. Yeah, yeah. To continue with the webinar, so that's great. And um, I think, yeah, we, we see the major, majority uh, of answers are that all of the above are, are needed for visibility. So the snapshot of the infra infrastructure, the changes uh, to the instances and security groups, and also the risks and vulnerabilities. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, again, that's very well, uh, that makes sense and resonates well with the different data that we have, uh, you know, explained so far, presented so far, as well as feedback that we received from many of our customers. Okay, so with that. Yeah, let's move on. Let's move on.
so to close this uh, story around uh, visibility, um, we believe that essentially uh, this is the biggest headache for, for state security because first, you can't protect what you can't see, right? Uh, you have to get visibility first to what's going on in your cloud, which security groups are open, which rules, whether they're open to the internet or not, or using any public APs and so on. Otherwise, you won't be able to protect this. And secondly, because this is uh, the, the involvement of every organization with the new technology. You first want to crawl, uh, and only then to walk and then to run. And essentially, visibility uh, is the crawling step, is the first step for every uh, organization to start with before gaining and starting automating things like and, and like running and feeling comfortable and, and, and uh, also change culture and processes within the organization itself. So, um, two-thing solution covers visibility, compliance, and policy-based automation. This is uh, our uh, security policy orchestration across hybrid cloud and physical network. As you can see here, we, are, we support all the leading uh, vendors, cloud vendors, whether it's the public cloud, which is AWS and Azure, or the private cloud, uh, which is the Cisco ACI, VMware NSX, and, uh, and OpenStack. And, and uh, we're going to get in the next couple of slides, few slides on how actually we enable our customers uh, to mitigate that. Uh, and again, because our, uh, we are emphasizing the visibility in this, uh, in this webinar, we're going to focus on uh, the visibility uh, capabilities from Tufin uh, Suite and a bit of a teaser on, uh, on the next webinar that we want to cover also on the compliance, on the compliance piece. So on the visibility side, Tufin provides uh, two layers or two uh, areas for visibility. And that, again, very much uh, also resonates with the, uh, with the poll that we did earlier. Uh, the first visibility layer is around the cloud infrastructure. So being able to, uh, to see from, uh, from secure track, from our console, uh, the security groups and the rules, uh, tagging DMs that are being uh, initiated and spin up, spin down on a almost uh, hourly basis or whatever. Um, the networks and the networking layer from uh, your uh, cloud vendor, as well as, uh, which is uh, captured with the snapshot, but also being able to see changes and track changes are they happening in the infrastructure and be able to compare these two. These are all covered as part of the Tufin solution uh, on the cloud infrastructure. And the, the other layer is the network, uh, being able to understand the network connectivity, not only on what's going on in your VPC or your VNet on your cloud infrastructure, but also being able to, to gain visibility across your hybrid environment. So visibility for your firewalls, your data center, your public cloud and private cloud, all of that from a single pane of glass uh, brings a lot of value and provides a good story and actually mitigates the same challenges that uh, explained earlier. Uh, and last is the, the given these capabilities, giving, uh, giving the, our customers uh, the way to analyze their network topology and also uh, troubleshoot easily and mitigate uh, issues. So um, when we're actually looking into the gaining uh, cloud infrastructure visibility, um, we're looking into having a single pane of glass to manage and control security across hybrid cloud and physical networks. Uh, and when you can see here, when zooming in, this is actually the, uh, the single pane of glass. So from a single UI, you can manage your AWS VPCs, your uh, Azure VNets, your NSX distributed and edge firewalls, as well as other uh, legacy firewalls and so on and so on uh, from the same UI. No need to jump and, no need and, and help, as we mentioned, uh, the, the security team. Uh, 
when we're looking at the cloud infrastructure visibility, we also uh, to can enable you to get a view and change monitoring of security groups. So here you can see different revision of a specific security group within a VPC of your Amazon, and you can see here a comparison of side-by-side -side changes that were done and indicating very easily and very intuitively what has changed. So you as a security manager, you don't need uh, while you're not the one that's actually responsible for these changes, you can see what has changed in your security group, what are the rules, and if something has, has changed, you can also, after that, mitigate it. Um, that's kind of more of a snapshot uh, and a zoom in. So uh, in, in a color legend, you can definitely see uh, very clearly what has changed and if something has removed or added. Uh, and, and again, as I mentioned, uh, take the next steps. And for those of you who are TUFIN customers and are already using, you know, the, these screens for a side-by-side -side comparison for your firewalls, then you can get the same, the same format of side-by-side -side comparison for your cloud platform. So right, that's, so uh, that's, that's a good makes point. Makes it easier. Right, that's a good point. Um, now we mentioned security group, but there are additional uh, cloud infrastructure data. Uh, the Tufin uh, gives you visibility into, like uh, tagging that many customers are using. So you can see here the different tags per uh, uh, each of VM, which is very common and best practice. And also you can see the different thread network subnets that you're using, again, from a single pane of glass, very similar, as Maya mentioned also, to uh, um, assets that we are presenting on, on firewall. Uh, automatically, Tufi knows to identify uh, different uh, uh, VMs and tags and present it to you so you can actually also search within your instances. You can see uh, which instance is located in which region and what are their tags. And then later on, uh, which is a, actually a topic for another uh, uh, webinar, is associated these with applications and also gain uh, application visibility. Uh, into that uh, automatically without the need to go to your AWS console. Uh, clicking on an instance will actually bring you to your AWS console and show you additional data that Amazon or Azure or what have you uh, provides without the need to go uh, and, and jump between these, these two dashboards. Definitely uh, makes your life easier and, and time consuming. Uh, that was covering the, the cloud infrastructure visibility. The next layer, as mentioned earlier, is the network visibility. So here you can see here, uh, uh, here you can see uh, network visibility, network topology, end-to-end, -end covering uh, public cloud, as I mentioned, private cloud, and on-prem from a single UI. You can actually search for your specific VPC or VNet and zoom in. Uh, but essentially, first, you can understand what's your topology. And with uh, enterprises that we are working on who have the most complex environment network in, in, in the world, that makes their life much more easier and, and getting you know, understanding of what's going on in their, in their cloud and, in general, in the network. You can then, from this topology map, actually uh, troubleshoot any network connectivity that you have uh, through a very simple path analyzer where you can actually enter a source or click and search for a specific source. Source can be a, uh, like a, an instance or a specific IP that is running on your on-prem and a destination and see whether there's actually a connectivity between these two. And if there's not uh, and there's something that is breaking this uh, connectivity, uh, which essentially can impact your application and business continuity, uh, two things can show you what is that is breaking, if there's a, like a role in your firewall, your perimeter firewall that blocks the traffic, hence your user cannot access your LDAP server from cloud. Uh, two things can show you that, can present that to you, and then later on you can go and, and fix that uh, and, again, enable the business community and actually resolve network connectivity issues. Uh, 
this is more a teaser. Uh, we cover the visibility uh, point of view, but also, as mentioned earlier, Tufin provides a compliance uh, capabilities as the next step, uh, providing either micro segmentation based on IP addresses or security group tags, and, and, and have a policy for tag for workloads running in the cloud. Uh, consider that as, as, as a teaser for our next uh, webinar. Um, but definitely something that's worth thinking of because once you're done with the crawl of the visibility, uh, then you want to walk. And the walk is, is the compliance. Uh, micro uh regulatory compliance, all of these are uh, definitely things that you need to consider as you're building your cloud security strategy. That's more of a, you know, we covered that. Uh, that's the talk policy. We'll definitely keep that for the next webinar. So, uh, to summarize, so we'll have enough time uh, for uh, Q&A. So, uh, first of all, we covered, we started with the digital transformation. This is definitely the business agenda, talking to every customer and every you know, CXO uh, in today's enterprise. Uh, and the one that actually fuels this disruption is the cloud. It provides great business opportunities, agility, cost effectiveness, uh, fail fast approach, but it also brings many uh, security challenges that we covered uh, today. Uh, but cloud security starts with the basics, and the, ba the basics is visibility. Gaining visibility and gaining understanding of what's going on in your public cloud, especially when you have a different team that provision, manage, and control this infrastructure. And Tufin, Tufin is the one that is the solution that provides you and, and, and address these challenges, uh, provides security and operation teams, uh, visibility, compliance, and automation, both for private cloud and public cloud platforms and across heterogeneous environment. And we are, when we are talking on, uh, on public cloud specifically today and on visibility, so we support all the primary cloud platforms, uh, Amazon, AWS, Microsoft Azure, as well as on the private, front, private cloud front, the VMware, NSX, Cisco, ACI, and OpenStack. Um, we provide visibility and change monitoring to cloud infrastructure. Uh, such as mentioned and explained earlier, security groups, VMs, subnets, and, and routing. Uh, automatic uh, and real-time discovery of instances, definitely helpful when the DevOps are running uh, things on their, in, in the cloud. And on the network layer, uh, providing the visibility of end-to-end -end across your whole uh, hybrid environment, uh, enabling to get an accurate topology simulation and path analysis to, to troubleshoot connectivity issues uh, across your whole network, across physical network, uh, private network like NSX, and, and AWS. And by that, actually, we are covering, uh, we covered the, the, the content uh, that we uh, now, the agenda that we want to cover in today's webinar. Yeah, we want to open it up for questions. So if you have a question, please click the questions button and uh, uh, type in your question. And we'll, of course, uh, uh, take these questions uh, and try to answer uh, as many of them as we can. So I think um, one question uh, that uh, that we're getting um, is the the need for visibility across systems and, and the need for a consistent uh, view of uh, security policies that goes across uh, different uh, consoles, across different vendors. Uh, the ability to identify a violation, 
so Amnon, can you maybe talk a, a little bit about, you know, handle, identifying and handling violations from, from a single console and the value of, of doing that? Yeah, so, so many, most of the enterprises essentially started from, from the on-prem, from the legacy. And as they move to the cloud, they will continue and have this hybrid environment. Uh, they, w while running applications on, on cloud, they will still consume on-prem resources like LDAP server, database server, and such that will not be migrated to the cloud maybe, I don't know, ever, but for sure not in the, in the near term. So getting this policy across these different environments is, is a crucial uh, capability. Uh, and also being able to uh, uh, enforce or get violation if such a policy is, uh, is, is you know, is being violated from different changes is also critical. And this is uh, one of the uh, uh, benefits and the added value uh, of Toofin. So being able to, as a tool that uh, monitors and gets visibility to these two environments, we can also track changes. Uh, and if, for example, rules are being added to your security group and violates such traffic or, or such uh, rules, uh, Tufin can actually monitor that, as we have, sh have shown earlier, and also uh, raise alerts uh, for violations and then enable you as a security team to, to actually uh, take the next step and, and remediate that. Uh, I also see there's another question here. Uh, does Tufin have policy automation capability across hybrid cloud? So the answer is yes. Uh, we uh, enable automation for firewalls, uh, leading firewalls like uh, um, Checkpoint, Palo, Juniper, and others. And we also support uh, automation for AWS uh, and, ad and adding capabilities as we move on in our roadmap. Um, that's definitely uh, uh, one of the benefits of, of autom automating that. We did not cover that today in our webinar because the focus was on visibility, uh, but we'll definitely uh, take this question as kind of a, a promo uh, for additional webinars in the future uh, around automation uh, capabilities in, in cloud and across hybrid environments. And I think I think that's where uh, the automation for for cloud platforms really you know brings value, which is where you are trying to automate changes, uh, whether it's to set up connectivity or or, or changes for the security policy across uh, um, your network, whether it's for north south applications or whether it's to fix connectivity that goes across your network, but but that's where you need, again, that uh, the, the automation and control from a single console where you can make changes to different platforms from different vendors. I agree. And, and it gets much more uh, time-consuming and effort-consuming and obviously uh, spending resources when we're talking about a complex environment such as, as our customers are using today. Okay. Uh, we're almost out of time. If there are any other questions, feel free to send us your question. We're, we're still going to try and follow up with you to make sure that you get an answer. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today for this webinar. Uh, it's kind of the first webinar uh, to, to focus on, uh, on you know, the visibility challenge uh, in, within cloud adoption. And like Amnon said, we're going to follow, follow this up with uh, uh, a webinar around the, the control for compliance and security in the cloud, uh, and probably also a third webinar around automation for policy changes. So, um, so that's our plan. And thank you very much for, uh, um, for attending. And like I said before, you have a couple of attachments. Uh, if you're interested, you can click on the attachments button and find a solution brief for AWS, as well as a white paper from Tufan on how to extend control uh, beyond your physical firewalls to private and public cloud platforms. Thank you, Amnon. Thank you, Maya. Thank you all for attending this webinar. Bye-bye.